the Wildlife Trust have been using the living landscape approach in recent years, which has um, come about due to uh, climate change, that we need to move away from our historic reserve-based conservation to a, uh, a conservation where wildlife can move more freely within the countryside and landscape. So we're trying to um, work on the land in between nature reserves, make the rivers a, a, a lot better place for wildlife to move freely within them and also expand from the rivers to good habitat close by. The project evolved um, out of um, water vole surveys that were done along these rivers trying to find out how the populations have uh, changed in recent years. As has happened nationally, there's been a huge decline in water vole numbers uh, and this was the case within the Cotswold Rivers as well. So we've done a lot of that work in, over the last few years through volunteer work parties that uh, come out on a regular basis to help with doing coppice in bankside trees, a lot of Himalayan balsam control we've done as well. Uh, we've also been working closely with Natural England getting uh, farmers into high level stewardship schemes to help with uh, habitat management along the water courses. So looking at the, the sort of habitat uh, quality that we've got and trying to improve it there are a number of measures that, that we sort of concentrated on. Uh, one was the, the overshading, the other being the banks uh, and bankside vegetation which is important habitat for not only water voles uh, but other invertebrates and wildlife that use the, uh, the river corridor to create a sort of dense marginal vegetation area uh, allows animals, wildlife to move more freely and unhindered uh, with some cover than if they're uh, grazed banks basically. So to create this we have um, done quite a lot of riverside fencing uh, in, in some areas to keep livestock away from the riverbank. This allows the vegetation to grow up but also um, protects the banks and stops silt from being knocked in to the watercourse. This um, nice bankside vegetation, obviously it needs plenty of light so we've been coppicing bankside trees to uh, encourage that to grow. Uh, so siltation's uh, been a problem within the, uh, within the watercourses uh, as well. So we've been putting in uh, woody deflectors to try and speed the water up in places uh, to clean the gravels out to give this diverse variation in habitat within the watercourse. Uh, so this narrowing is, is, is quite a good way of uh, speeding the water up in places. We have it slower in others. Where the wood goes in, there's some gouging out of the uh, riverbed as well, so we're getting deeper pools uh, and, and variation in, in, in flow. We um, have a standardised uh, methodology, really, so we're kick sampling the substrate of the riverbed. So we're just kicking up, I'm just disturbing the, the gravel and the silt just upstream of the net here, so anything that's under there will hopefully float down and get caught in the net. And I'm trying to get a good cross-section of the stream as well, so we're, we're monitoring all of the different microhabitats within the river. I'll get right down here into the water crowfoot as well. So all those creepy crawlies that like the, the aquatic vegetation and like the silts and like the gravel, so we're, we're monitoring all those different habitats. And we do three one-minute sessions wherever we are, so we can compare these results so they're comparable, so we can compare them with, with different stretches of the river up or downstream and compare them over time. We, we monitor the invertebrates in the river because it gives us an, an idea, an early warning if there are pollution incidents in the river. So a, a good healthy river will have a wide diversity of aquatic invertebrates and also lots of them, so we're looking at abundance, we're looking at diversity to determine the health of the river. So a healthy river would have lots of microhabitats within them, so areas of gravel, areas of silt, areas of aquatic vegetation and marginal vegetation. And various target groups of invertebrates um, are adapted to live in these environments. So it's a good um, indication for us as to whether our management um, is benefiting the river and the invertebrates and the food chain. 
So if we have a look in here, you can immediately see it's, it's writhing with life. So there are lots of shrimps and, and caddis flies and at least two or possibly three different types of mayfly in there. It looks like there's a caseless caddis there as well. Excellent. We've restored uh, watercress uh, beds uh, along, along the river Windrush uh, further downstream from our Brassy Valley Nature Reserve, which is a nationally important uh, mire site, important for its uh, assemblage of wetland plants. Mink have been monitored by um, putting out mink rafts every sort of two kilometres on the river Windrush, so we got quite a lot out there. Luckily, we found very few signs of mink and we hope that uh, you know it, that stays the way basically. We've been working on the River Windrush uh, for the past five years uh, very successfully. We're going to carry on with a maintenance programme on the River Windrush and are going to uh, move our attentions now to uh, the River Colne, um, the sort of next river down uh, within the Cotswold River system.